Bells will be ringing the glad, glad news. Oh, it's Christmas, baby, to have the blue. Well, my baby's gone, and I have no friends. Oh, wait, wait, wait a second. I got my baby right here, Barb. What am I singing this song for? Oh, that's because it's Christmas time. Hey, everybody, this is Chef Danny. How are you? It's Christmas time in the city. <clears throat> Ring-a-ling, hear them ring. We are going to have some fun today. Whew. Yeah, check this out. These are pate choux pastry balls. And we are going to make a few things out of these today. I'm going to show you how to make this dough. You probably think, oh, I can't do that. Yes, you can. You can do it. It is not that hard. We are going to start right now. You can use these for a lot of different things. We're going, to, we're going to make some cream puffs today. I want to show you how to make some circular chocolate eclairs. We're going to do a couple appetizers with these. So you got four or five things that you can do with these right here. So let's just get started. Boom. Let's do it. Well, I've preheated. I've totally preheated my, my um, stove here because it takes a little while. But I am going to start making the dough half a cup of water right in the pot half a cup of milk right in the pot four ounces four ounces I am going to put four ounces of butter I cut these in pieces because they came out of the refrigerator right in I am going to put two tablespoons of white granulated sugar right in there and we're cleaning as we're going. Quarter tablespoon of salt. Oh, right in. And we're going to start to heat this. We're going to bring this to a boil. I have my KitchenAid mixer set up with the paddle attachment, which is this right here. Okay. If you don't have a KitchenAid mixer, no problem. You can use a hand blender. Or <laughs> you want to do it the old-fashioned way and do the old whipperoni with the whip. Your arm might fall off, but it'll get done. So, back here, I have a double boiler, because we are going to make the chocolate ganache. That's going to go on top of our chocolate eclairs. I already pre-made some chocolate pastry cream. If you're interested in that recipe, you can inbox me, and I'll be happy to send it out. And I also made some vanilla pastry cream. This has to be made ahead and cold. That's why I couldn't do this on the show. Okay? But those are simple to make too. Alright, so here we go. Oh, let's see. Well, that's not going to fit, Barb. Let me put this on here. We're going to put some chocolate in here. Half a cup of chocolate. We are going to let this start to... I can actually put it right here. You know what? I should grab a top. Because that is taking too long. So that top is going on there. I also have here chicken salad that I made, some egg salad. So I want to show you a couple different things that you can make with this stuff. Really simple. Holiday times are upon us, and I tell you what, we are. We even though we got COVID and everybody's like all freaked out, and you know some people are going to be spending the holidays in a close knit area and not a big big. Uh, you know, family situation, we still want to eat good. We want to eat good. We don't want it to break the bank, and we, want, we don't want it to be too difficult to prepare. And that's what, this is fantastic. This is for appetizer and dessert. You can do both with this. So right now, what's, ha what's happening is this is starting to boil. While that's boiling, getting ready to boil, I'm starting to look at my chocolate. I am going to also add for the ganache, you have chocolate melting in the double boiler. The double boiler is really great because you can heat your chocolate without it burning because you're not going directly on the heat source. You have, a, you have a barrier. You have this and the steam is starting to heat this. And you can see that it's starting to stick already in there. Okay? You can also do this in a glass Pyrex bowl, however you like. Okay, so now this is boiling. This is totally boiling now, and we're going to add our 
cup of flour. I'm going to add our cup of flour right away. I'm going to take this off the fire. This is hot. Woohoo, Barb. We're starting to mix this in. Okay, it looks like it looks like lumpy potatoes right now. Don't worry. We're gonna mix it in. Ooh, it smells nice, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It smells like you know what it smells like? Cream of wheat. Doesn't it smell like cream of wheat like yeah. bread in the morning? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is starting to pull away right there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually evaporate a little more and we're gonna what we're gonna need to do is keep stirring this and keep it on the heat for about two minutes. While that's happening, that is melting, and now I'm going to add my, where's my cream? With the ganache, all ganache is is chocolate. You can use um, semi-sweet, dark chocolate, bitter chocolate, bittersweet chocolate, milk chocolate. I'm using semi-sweet for mine. And all it is is chocolate with a liquid, and the liquid we're going to use is heavy cream. So I put a half a cup in there. I'm going to try it with a half a cup of cream. I'm going to go a little more. I'm going to go two-thirds. And this is going to go, and this is going to get scalded. This is going to actually scald in here. And I'm going to mix it into that chocolate. Okay, so now you got to watch this because this will start to stick. You don't want it to stick and burn. Okay, so, you, so you can see now that's starting to pull away. That's beautiful. I'm going to go just a couple seconds more. And what this does is it really incorporates the liquid into the flour and the flour absorbs the liquid and it also gets any extra moisture out. Because the last thing we want is a runny, battery, um, pâté choux dough. And by the way, pâté et choux, pâté in French means paste. And believe it or not, choux, C-H-O-U-X, means cabbage. So cabbage paste, it doesn't make any sense. I think what happens is this kind of looks like a little cabbage or a little Brussels sprout when it's cooked. All right? Okay, now, we're going to go right here. This is going to scald while this is happening. We're going to actually put this in our mixer. Okay? This will be a little loud for a second, but it's okay. We're going to get through it. All right? We're going to turn it on. The steam is going to start to escape. And what we're going to do now is we're going to add whole eggs one by one. One by one is the operative word or operative phrase in the sentence. Lower it a little bit. Let the steam go out a little bit. And you want to do it in a glass container so if you see a shell in there, you can take it out. My mother used to tell me, oh, the shells are free. Right, shells are free. What you're going to do is you're going to let this incorporate for about 30 to 40 seconds before you add the next egg. Right in. Boom. My third egg. I'm going to add. Now this is starting to, to get some traction in here. You see that bar? See that? And the last one. One more. See all those French chefs, they want to keep this a secret, but this is this is easy. This is easy. You can do it at your house. Okay, we're starting to get some traction. We're gonna add the last egg. Clean as we go. So we don't make a mess. Meanwhile, while that's going, this is now scalded. So what I'm gonna do. And I'm going to take this out. I'm just going to put this right in. And the residual heat of that cream is going to heat this, okay? Let it sit. You can check your Instagram now if you want. You can go and check your Facebook. If you'd like, whatever you'd like to do, you can do that and not have to worry about that. This, on the other hand, I'm going to... Scrape it down. You gotta scrape it down from the top. And don't be afraid to go all the way down and underneath the um, underneath the uh, the paddle. Alright. Lock it in. 
Okay, so now we're done with this. So what we're looking for is, in our consistency, is it looks like it's, it's grabbing onto the paddle, however, the weight of it is starting to pull it down, which is fine. It's almost like mozzarella on a pizza, but a little denser, a little, little slower, okay? Now, I already have some pate de choux made, and I put it into a pastry bag because I really wanted to show you how to do it with an ice cream scoop. But I thought I had a small ice cream scoop, but I don't. I only have a big one. So, I'll still show you, but I'm going to pipe it out with a, with a pastry bag. I prefer people that, uh, that are not proficient with a pastry bag, like this, to use a scoop. They come out very, very nice. Okay? You know what I forgot, Barb? I forgot the egg wash. That's all right. So here's your pate choux. Normally I would put this right into a pastry bag. They have a pastry bag right here. When you're working by yourself, you cut, of course you cut this here with a knife. You kind of measure and put your tip in. And you kind of roll this over. This is a plastic disposable one. You just can't, you can't forget to take the tip out before you throw it out because tips can be get, get pricey. And what happens is the next time you need it, you'll be looking for that tip, and you'll say, oh, I threw it out when I made the pet of shoe. You want to fold this over like that. Okay? You want to keep this clean. You can hold it like this, or if you're working by yourself, you can get a tall thing, tall cup, fold it, push it in like that. I'm not going to put it in here because I don't have a tip, but you're going to, you're going to kind of put it inside. And then when it's full, like this, you're going to squeeze it out and you get the air out of here. All right? Let me put this, uh, let me put this here, Barb. Okay, you got that? Now, my tray. Let me show you how to pipe these out. Normally you would use a scoop. This is a nice size scoop for a very big, very big cream puff because these are going to grow. But for bite size, for this size, you want a half size of this, like a two ouncer. Okay? You're going to be squeezing from this side, your right hand, if you're a righty. This goes into your webbing, and you just twist, and you're holding it like this. This is your guide hand. What you want to do is you want to put a little bit of pate de choux on the bottom, so when you're piping, the parchment doesn't move. And I would recommend to buy parchment paper. All right, see that? Nice. And you're going to come just like this. You're going to come, you're going to hold this, and you're just going to squeeze from the top, Boom, just like that, just like that, okay? I had this in the refrigerator, so it's a little bit, I'm going to have to make some egg wash bar, because what, the egg wash, I don't even have a pastry brush, I thought I had one of those too, <laughs> I got home from school today, and I'm like, I got to get ready for tonight, and sometimes it just, I forget. But that's okay, because that happens all the time in the kitchen when you're at home. Let's see, let me get an egg. Let me see if I can get an egg. Let me move my table. A little more, Barb. Can you believe this? I cannot get this egg. All right, now I can pull it out. Egg wash is really very good and what it does is it adds color one egg a touch of milk like oh i got a shell in there see it's just a little bit like that and now if i had a pastry brush then i would brush it on but i'm not i don't have a pastry brush i'm gonna do it with my finger well, egg wash does a couple things. It adds flavor, it adds color, but it also adds sheen, shine. And it also helps to reform the pet de choux. So see like that? You want to take these down because these will burn in the, in the oven. Because we're starting this at 400, okay, 400 degrees. You can just go like this. And see how I'm just mashing this down and getting this into the... Um, getting it into the dough, and I'm just moving that around a little bit. It's okay if you use your fingers. 
if, you had, if I had a pastry brush, it would work. But, you know, we improvise. This is what happens. We don't have every little tool in the kitchen. We don't. And sometimes you just have to know how to improvise, and that takes a lot of uh, angst out of cooking. All the little hidden rules or little hidden tricks. Okay. Now, this is going into the oven for about 15 minutes at 400 degrees. And what's going to happen is these are going to start to puff up because the moisture in the eggs is going to evaporate and it's going to create steam and it's going to lift this up into a ball. Almost like when you blow up a balloon and then the egg whites in the eggs are going to cook and it's going to become like cement and it's going to hold the shape. See, it's going to hold the shape. And the, the steam dissipates, but the shape is here. And these end up being hollow. After about 15 minutes, we're going to get some color and we're going to get some rise. We're going to turn this down to about 200 degrees, 225 degrees. And we're going to let, let, let the pâté chou dry out because it has to be crispy. If it's moist and it's pl too pliable, it's going to be mushy. And when you add your cream, for your cream puffs, for your pastry cream, it's going to, um, it's going to be uh, too... Um, Where's that? It's gonna be too. It's gonna be too soggy. All right. So here we go. We're starting to mix this. Barb, you know what? In there, I need some more chocolate. I need some more chocolate. I'll get it. Yeah. It's okay if if it's too much uh, liquid in there. This is a little liquidy. No biggie. Let's take our chocolate. Gonna add a little more chocolate. Let's see. Back. Where's the back? Right here. All right. Let's take a little chocolate out. Add a little more chocolate in here. Okay. And we're gonna mix it. Meanwhile, while this is mixing and melting, I am going to. I'm gonna put this back on the stove. This is still warm, but I'm gonna actually do it more. I'm going to put it back here. I'm going to let it melt a little bit and mix this. And this is going to be like a, almost like a sauce. And it's going to coat the outside of our pate choux. While that's happening, I'm going to do what I in, intended to do is show you some appetizers. Okay. So, like I said, these are hollow. I'm going to take a serrated knife. Wow, we're on for a long time today, Barb. Huh. This is an important show here. We're going to cut these. If you can look at these, these are hollow. See this? All right? See that, Barb? Hollow. All right? The bottoms are here. And sometimes there might be a little of these little stranglers in here that you can just pull out. See this? You just pull those out. Okay? Pull those little extra things out. All right? All right. Now, we have our chicken salad. These are great for appetizers. You can do it two ways. You can do it this way, which I'm going to do like this. All right? I'm not going to put the covers on them. It could be really hard to eat. All right? Now, what you might want to do, which I did not do, is just to make a little base on the bottom. Make a little base so it sits flat. If you're going to do an appetizer, see that? How it sits flat? Just take that top off so it doesn't roll. Okay? Like this. And this is just simple stuff. I have some nice scallions here. You can put a little piece of red pepper or an olive on here or something to bring the eyes to... The focal, which is the middle, and I'll do four more. And you know who's going to eat these, right, Barb? Me. You and I, honey. Woohoo! Pretty Barb is my. Vi oh, would you see what I just did? Did you see that? It's okay, I got another one. Nice. Oh, I'm going to take the little stranglers out inside. Oh, this is nice. Here we go. Meanwhile, my. Pet the shoe, uh, uh, my ganache is starting to melt. Beautiful. Little scallions. Nice, nice. 
Okay, Barb, that's four of those. And now we're going to do four of the egg salad. This egg salad, I put a little mayonnaise in here, salt and pepper, and a touch of mustard, and some more scallions. I thought I had mayonnaise. I had to borrow it from my neighbor. I called her up on the phone. I said, oh, you got some mayonnaise? I ran out. I thought I had more in my fridge. It happens. Like I said, if you know how to improv, no big deal. It's when you don't know, that's when it creates a lot of stress. Look at this. Look at that. That's nice. These are nice for a little appetizer. Simple, super simple. Now, this, this, this dough has a little sugar in it, which is okay. But you can make this totally savory. And if you wanted to, I've done this before. I've put cocoa powder in here to make them chocolate. But I've also put fresh herbs in the mixer. In the mixer while I was mixing. While I was, while I was mixing it. Okay? In here, I put fresh herbs, right? Of course, you can put more salt instead of sugar to make it savory. Okay, here we go. So now this is starting to melt. Here we go. This is what I'm talking about right here. See this? That's perfect right there. This is what you're looking for. Get the lumps out. You can use a spatula. And if there's lumps in there, that's just chocolate. And if you keep mixing it, the res this is driving me crazy. The residual heat of the mixture will melt that and you just scrape it down okay and this is what you're looking for right here beautiful that's beautiful now let me show you a trick here let's see how we're doing it here Barb now it's really important that you understand that you can't open the door when you're cooking the pate choux. you have to look at your oven do not open the door because what's going to happen is the, the steam in there the, is you're going to move it around. You're going to move the um, the pan around, the agitation, and what's going to happen is your eggs are going to break and it's going to flop on you, and then you can't do anything about it. Okay, but cry about it. All right, and say, oh my God, I got to do it again. All right, so let's do this, Barb. Oh, yeah, so we're going to do the same thing. Boom. Let's see. I'm going to do the big ones for the cream puffs, Barb. Got cream puffs here. Two, one, two, three, four, five. All right, so, so we got, here's the tops and the bottoms are there. The tops and the bottoms are there. Bottom is here, here's the top. Here we go. Pull these little, these little things out here. Nicey nice. Okay. Pull these out. Now we're going to put, let me see, two chocolates. We got, you know what? I want to make three cream puffs, Barb. Three. Well, I'm going to do two chocolates, pastry cream. Okay. You can pipe this out with a pastry bag, but you know what? This is just as easy. You go nice and neat. Okay. Two vanilla pastry cream. This is just like chocolate eclairs you get at the bakery, except they're a different size. You know? I can show you how to pipe one of those out too, since I have the pastry bag here. Alright, and now these. Okay. This is just gonna go like this. In. Not all the way in, just like that. Oh my God! Come on, Barb. Which one do you want? Chocolate. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That means I got to eat all the other ones. Yeah. Barb's laughing because she knows I could. Oh my God! This is crazy. Crazy. Oh, look at how it coats. See, that's what you're looking for. And then this will get cool after. You can pop these in the fridge if you like. Just to. Just re-solidify. It's never going to solidify to back to where it was as a chip. However, it will adhere better. All right. So now we have these right there. And now, Barb, we're going to do our cream puffs. 
Okay? Three of these. Beautiful. Okay, take these little things out. And I have my whipped cream right here. Right in. Nicey nice. This is just whipped cream with a little bit of vanilla. Fresh vanilla extract. And then the tops go on like this. Now, a little confectionery right on here, like that. A little tap. Now, if you're going to present these nicey nice, you don't want to grab them here and put your fingerprint on there. You kind of want to, you know what, let's just do it like this, Barbara. We'll go. One. You want to grab them to the side. Two, three. Oh, wow. Clean as we go, right? Don't get nervous about the mess, right? Okay. Look at that. I'm going to put this over here. Um, right here. And I think this is appropriate time, Barb. For an espresso, what do you think, sweetie? Okay. Oh God, look at that! Look at the shine on those. Isn't that beautiful? Look at this. So simple, 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 and elegant at the same time. Now, if you wanted to, you could um, you can actually uh, put fruit in here, some fresh fruit. Okay, Barbara, turn green. That means we're ready to go. Folks, if you like what you see, I am now booking for January for group lessons and or private lessons. Okay, if you're interested in taking the lesson and working with me, I can show you a lot of things. A lot of things that will help you up your game. The food lovers want to help the food lovers to become better home cooks. Go ahead, Barbara. I can't. Oh, yeah, it's going to be on Zoom. Oh, my God, on Zoom. So I just want you to know, Barbara was a student of mine, and that's how she fell in love. She fell in love with me on the Zoom. On the Zoom. Barb, I over, over, overdid these, but I know you like yours long. I like mine short. So, folks... Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. Look at the creme on there. Oh my God. Beautiful. Hmm. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Catch a tiger by the toe. I don't know. You want to eat dessert first then? Oh yeah. Appetizer? Yeah. Well, listen, folks. Thanks for popping out. I had a fun time. Wow, this was a long show today. I love it. We had some fun. Listen, you, got, you learned some things today. So apply what you learn. Make these. They're super simple. It, it didn't take that long for me to do this. I am now going to... You can, by the way, save this for another day. I can save this for up to a week or so. Just like this in a, in a container. And I can use it another day. So if you make a little extra, don't, don't get stressed out. And if, and if you do bake them off, put them in a Ziploc bag. Put them in a Ziploc bag. They freeze. If you want to freeze them, they're fine if you want to freeze them. Let's see how this is right here. Okay, so these are starting to hit. Go high. I'm going to go higher on these bar. I'm going to go 24, 25. Okay. All right. Listen. Thank you so much. Looking forward to next week when we're going to do more holiday treats. This is Chef Danny. God bless you all. Peace.